Happy Monday, everyone. I'm super excited to be here with you today. My name is Bev McCullough of Flamingo Toes, and we are doing the Country Daisies Quilt Sew Along. Quilt Along Sew Along. <laughs> um, and we are sewing up this fun quilt together. This is a sampler quilt. It has several different block styles. Um, I just saw the UPS truck coming down our road, so my dogs are gonna bark. <laughs> <laughs> this is my concern in videos always. What noise is gonna go on in the rest of the house that y'all can hear? Fortunately, you are very nice, all of you. <laughs> and you don't mind my dogs freaking out about the UPS man, who is apparently a great threat to all perimeters and... <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are having a great week and I hope that you um, have had lovely weather. We are having a really, it's a. I don't know what the groundhog he said it was going to be another six weeks of winter and we're not seeing it i don't know it's like it's going from 70 one day to like 30 the next and then it's back to 50. so there's a little bit of a roller coastery thing happening here and i don't know what's it about but it's okay with me because it's not like permanently 30. and if you guys have watched my videos or hung around me for any length of time you know that um, that's not really my jam. So <laughs> so let's see who's here today. It looks like we have some fun friends um, that are excited uh, to be here over on Facebook. We have Allison and Kelly. She's excited that uh, she got what gets to watch live today. Yay, Kelly, I'm glad you're here. And Wendy's here, Dawn's here, Lindy, hey Lindy, and Rhonda. Uh, Lindy likes the opening to the video. Good, Lindy, thanks. <laughs> yes, Rhonda, happy Monday. Um, Rhonda asked what the difference is between a sew along and a quilt along. There isn't really one that I know of. I think the words are used interchangeably, except that S-A-L is sometimes used for stitch along if you are doing like a cross stitch project or an embroidery project or something like that. So I think you can use them interchangeably. Um, and I think people do. <laughs> Lindy said we love dogs. Oh, good. I'm so glad. They were actually quiet. I don't know. They must be sleeping. Sometimes my husband takes them in with me because he works from home too. And so sometimes he takes them in with him. And so if they can't see the door, then they don't know that the big scary UPS man is here. <laughs> Stephanie's here. Hey, Stephanie. Glad you're here too. Marie's here from Florida. Is it sunny and beautiful in Florida? When does it get sunny and beautiful? Or is it just always sunny and beautiful where you are, Marie? <laughs> Oh, Kelly's from Washington State. Fun. And Wendy says her dog does the same thing with the UPS man. Yeah, pretty much anybody that comes to the house. Well, and we have a lot of windows in the front of the house and our front door is three quarters windows so they can see everybody and they're just very protective. <laughs> There's We have a German Shepherd and a Golden Retriever. The Golden Retriever was quiet until the German Shepherd taught her to bark at all the people. And so now it's like, it's like in stereo. It's cool. <laughs> hey, Sandra. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, let's see. Over on um, YouTube, Therese is here. Sari's here. Judy's from Vermont. And Pam's here live. Yay, Pam. Christine's here. Leslie. Katarina's is from Germany. Yay, that's awesome. Oh, she says it's warm there. That sounds lovely. And Deborah's working from home, so she gets to watch live today. Woohoo! <laughs> And Molly's all starched and ready for this morning. That's awesome, Molly. You go. That's great. And Susie and Diana, Lisa and Janice are here <laughs> from Happy Jack, Arizona. I love it. Teresa says donkeys are great alarms. Yes, very, very true. And Marie says it's pretty much always sunny and beautiful in Florida. I love it, Marie. That's awesome. I haven't been to Florida in a number of well, it's been several years since we've been to Orlando, so maybe I need to do a Florida trip. I could do some sunny and warm. <laughs> okay, so we are sewing, right? We are making up our Country Daisies quilt, which again is not the quilt behind me because we are making this quilt up. I am making it up with you. So, da 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 da, -da. This is our cute block too. So it's a really fun design and it's 
there's a lot of piecing that goes into this block, but the nice thing about it is it's big. This is another big block, just like our block was last week. It is a 16 inch finished block. So our pieces that we're doing these flying geese like stitch and flip blocks with are fairly good size, which makes it a little bit easier to control your fabric and you have um, just bigger areas. So, you know, when you're doing your seams, you don't have to worry quite so much because you're not working with really tiny areas. I mean, it can all be done smaller, right? But it's nice if it's bigger. <laughs> so this is the cute block we're making. We are making four of these total and they're um, the same in fabrics. Let's switch cameras. They are, and we'll go over this again, but they are the same in fabrics up until the last round. So on all four blocks, you're gonna use four that are this green main print. You're gonna use, all four will have this denim, like daisy print. They'll all have um, these light aqua bees around them. And then two of, the, two of the blocks will have the bee print here as the darker teal color. This is only if you're doing the kit and two will have like a scattered hexagon border around the outside. So that is the fun thing about this block is that it's um, almost exactly the same. You can do a lot of uh, strip piecing and things like that with it together so that it's um, chain piecing, sorry. Yeah, it's Monday, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so that is what we're going to do today and it there would be quite a bit of piecing in this block if we were going to make up the entire thing together so I have some things prepped ahead of time and some I'm just going to kind of show you what to do but I have some tips for you and a, one thing that I'm going to tell you not a cutting thing different but just a piecing like pressing thing that I'm going to tell you differently than what's in the pattern because I feel like it'll make these flying geese sections go together a little bit easier so before we get to our sewing, I want to show you my current um, block for the RBD block challenge. So Riley Blake is doing a, I'll hold this up so you guys can see while I talk. I'll hold it this way so you can actually see me and the block. So Riley Blake is doing a mystery quilt along. This is their third year that they've done it in an official capacity. The year before that it was COVID and it was a much more, um, relaxed so they're not like a full layout or anything like that we just all presented blocks one a week and kind of you know just to give people things to do that was at the height of the pandemic but now it's much more organized so in january they kick off a really fun mystery quilt though this year you can take a peek at the final layout if you want to and this is block six in the quilt and i love this block and I don't know, I don't know a whole lot about like classic quilt block names. This is the Jack in the Box block, Jack in the Box block, <laughs> say that five times fast. Um, so I'm not sure if somebody knows if this is a, um, like a common classic vintage -y kind of block or not. I don't know. I hadn't ever seen it before, um, but I love it. <laughs> I think it's really fun and I feel like you can do, it's got a very much a 3D look and and then some of that is kind of fabric layout, like your prints and stuff like that. But you can really have a lot of fun with the layout of this, you know, as far as which, how you want this kind of fan sort of thing to look. So play with your colors a little bit and see, just because we've made it this way doesn't mean that you have to, you know, it's your quilt. So this one is designed by Sandy Gervais. It's a really fun block. And I am sewing up my blocks is, with um, my basic Dainty Daisy. And it's, um, I'm really having a good time with this. I picked um, the more springy colors and then I added in like this dark reddish pink and then I added in the denim blue just to give the prints a little bit more depth. I wanted them not to be all super light colors. And I'm really having a good time with it. And I'm using my, as the background, I'm using my Hush Hush 2 Low Volume. So, and the little spools in that are very similarly colored to the fabrics that I've chosen. So, it's really fun. I'll hold it up a little bit closer so you can see. There's my Dainty Daisy. You can see that Dainty Daisy is kind of got a, like a little paint spatter sort of effect to it. 
And then it also has little tiny daisies all over it, kind of just sparsely scattered around. So it's a really fun block and I love it. Now today, normally the RBD Block Challenge blocks are released on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain, but this week, and I'm not entirely sure why, because <laughs> I didn't know that was happening until today, um, this week is Lori Holt's week and her block actually released today. So if you are soloing along, one, you can get the block today. I'm not posting mine till tomorrow because it was all scheduled and ready to go, so I'm leaving it tomorrow till tomorrow and we're doing this today anyway. Um, so I will have mine up tomorrow to share with you guys, but if you want, you can go see Lori's versions and you can get the pattern today. And two, if you are sewing along, make sure you post your blocks in the Facebook group because we would love to see them. It would be really fun. And there's also an RBD Block Challenge Facebook group that's just dedicated to people sharing their RBD Block Challenge blocks. And that is super inspirational, you guys, because people are doing all kinds of different fabrics and so you can get a lot of inspiration with colors and layouts and things like that. And uh, it's really, really fun. Super supportive, very friendly group. It's always nice. So that's nice. I know, Don, there's a, Don said so many quilt alongs. Yes, I know, it's a lot. <laughs> Carrie says um, she needed to make her tea. She's here, just regular orange pico for me. We are, uh, there's a lot of us that are big tea drinkers here. So um, I am actually drinking uh, soda today because <laughs> I wanted something a little colder and something fast because I was running around just a little bit before um, the video. So I'm a soda girl today, Carrie, but yay for drinking tea. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, let's do giveaways. All right, so every week we have a little giveaway and it's my way of thanking you guys for tuning in and they're super easy to enter. All you have to do is leave a comment on the videos and you can do it whether you're watching live or later in the week and whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube and by now you guys could probably say that little spiel along with me. <laughs> Those of you that have gone through several so alongs with me. Um, so what I do is I show the prize and then the next week I um, show the prize again, but then I announce the winner. So really easy, really fun to do. So, um, oh, hi, Darlene. I'm glad you're here. Rhonda asked, how do you keep all the sew alongs and quilt along straight? Um, well, you know, it's just, uh, it's, I, I keep mine organized. I have little, I keep these, you know, and I have um, an extra table in my sewing room. So I keep all my current blocks for each sew along stacked on a backing board and that makes them easy to find and since I'm running um, at least two of them <laughs> it's a little easier to keep track of for me but yes it's a lot sometimes but so fun right um, okay so this last week I had for you guys a 10 inch stacker of South Hill by Fran Gulick and if you are going to QuiltCon this week you can meet Fran in person in the Riley Blake booth she is going to be doing a demo of something and I don't know what. <laughs> is anybody going to QuiltCon this week? I am not able to make it, I'm very sad. I had some other work things that are keeping me here, but it's only, it's over in Atlanta and it's open to the public. So if you are going, make sure you check by the Riley Blake booth and meet Cindy and I know Christopher's gonna be there and several other people, so definitely go by and say hi. So. South Hill is gorgeous, you guys. It's navies, pinks, and ivories, different shades of each of those things. And this is a gorgeous collection that is in stores right now, and it is beautiful. I actually made up a, um, a pillow, a heart pillow pattern for you guys, and things got so busy this last month that I didn't get it shared before Valentine's Day and I'm debating whether or not to do it now or wait till next year but it is made up in South Hill so I'm kind of thinking I will go ahead and just post it. Would you guys like a, a heart pillow uh, tutorial even though it's not Valentine's Day anymore? Hearts are good anytime, right? <laughs> Let me know what you think. <laughs> but anyway, it is in Southwell. Uh, if you're interested, I will go ahead and post it. It's a cute pillow. Um, and then I also have, in addition, so I'm like all over the place today. <laughs> Back to the giveaway. We have the South Hill 10-inch stacker. I have a really cute, brand new, these are brand new. This is, let's see if I can get it close enough that you can see it without the glare. It's hard. I'm getting a lot of glare. 
This is, let's see, I'll hold it up and it, like a brooch. <laughs> it's a cute little, it's shaped like a churn dash and it is a churn dash binding holder. It's brand new from Riley Blake Designs. It's acrylic, so it's really sturdy. And so you make up your binding and you wrap it on here and it keeps your binding nice and tidy and really organized. So that if you're not sewing it on immediately, maybe you wanna get your binding prepped while your quilt is at the quilter or something like that, then you can make up your binding and it even has a little hole, you can see right there, a little hole. And so you could put it on a pegboard or something like that if you want to, to keep it all tidy. And then I also have this really cute little aqua, I'm not gonna take it out of the package, aqua um, seam ripper for you and it's ergonomic. It's really nice and comfortable to hold. If you have to, have a seam ripper, which we all do, right? And you have to have an, and use it. You might as well have a really cute one. <laughs> okay, so over on YouTube, Tina Ford was watching and commenting last week. Tina is the winner of this prize. If you are Tina Ford, send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com with your mailing address, and I will get it out in the mail to you this week. So yay, Tina. <laughs> Okay, let's see what everybody thinks about the pillows. Okay, hearts all year. Post it, Stephanie says. Oh, let's see, I'm missing comments. Hearts all season. Oh, yay, okay, you guys still wanna see it. I love it. And, oh, Allison said Easter and Mother's Day is coming too. Well, that's a good point. It would be a really cute Mother's Day pillow. Yay, okay, all right. Okay, everybody, everybody wants to see the hearts pillow despite my um, late. <laughs> All right, all right, you guys, I, that's awesome. I'm super excited. Okay, I'll post the heart pillow this week. How about that? Okay, so I have for you guys in this week's giveaway, this is a, oh, let's see, it's, the, it's gotten sunnier than it was when I started the video, so I set my settings for what it is outside, and now it's really sunny, so I'm a lot lighter than I was before. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can see. So anyway, um, for this week's giveaway, I um, I am subscribed to the Fat Quarter Shop Sew Sampler, which is basically just a subscription box with monthly quilty things in it. There's usually, there's fabric in there and then several notions. There's always a quilt pattern to do and things like that. So I love getting these. I love the projects in them. I think they do such a good job of curating these boxes and um, sometimes I give them away to you guys. So this week, this prize is the August Sew Sampler box from last year, the Follow Your Dreams box. Let's see if I can make it so that it's not quite so light. I don't know if I can. One sec, <laughs> we'll see. Let's just darken it a little bit. Is that a little bit better? Maybe a little better. Okay, so in this fun box is a Fat Quarter Bundle from Sherry and Chelsea, and this is their Emma collection. There's one, two, three, four, five, six in here. Six, oh, there you go. This is the really cute yellow. This is gonna be so great for spring. I'm not gonna open this because it's not mine anymore. It's yours, but there you can see the colors. There's a yellow, a couple yellows, greens, like a pinky color and a blue. Teresa says that's better, thanks Teresa. <laughs> so this is a really cute collection and there's seven fat quarters in here. Wait, one, two, three, four, six fat quarters in here. And along with those fat quarters is this really cute enchanted pillow pattern. Look at that. So the nice thing about the sampler box is they always give you a pattern to go with it. You can see the fabric colors that you get there. And then you'll need to add some background fabric and accent and binding. So all the colored pieces are gonna be your fat quarters and then you'll need to add your background and then this gray accent piece. But isn't that a cute quilt pattern? I love that. So in here also is a So Fine Thread Gloss in Ruby Grapefruit. That's really fun. Some tiny yellow scissors. These are cute and perfect for travel. And then also in here is a quilt measuring tape that is a Riley Blake Designs, mm, let's see, measuring tape. It's got a cute little design on it, I love it. 
It says quilt measure and it's 12 feet long. So you can measure all the things with that. <laughs> so I will send you all the things in this box and you can get started and make up something really cute. You can also, of course, use the fat quarters for whatever you would like. You don't have to make up that quilt pattern, but it's always nice to have a cute free quilt pattern that doesn't take forever to make up, right? <laughs> all right, you guys. Um, so that's the giveaway for this week and you can enter by leaving a comment. Super easy to do. Yeah, I like it too. Morgan says it's a very cute quilt pattern. It really is, so fun. Now I'm even lighter. You guys, the sun is playing havoc with my day. <laughs> this is crazy down. Now I'm a mess. Okay, you guys. Let's see what we're doing here. All right, I might just have to be a little bit pale here. <laughs> okay, um, let's get started with sewing. So what we're going to do, let's switch cameras here. So there, that's a little bit better. I'm just going to be, <laughs> Morgan said, I wish we had sun, all we have is wind here today. Oh, Morgan, I'm sorry, that's no good. Marie says she likes the measuring tape. It's so cute, right? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to make this block from the center out. So that means we're going to start with this cute big square, and then we're gonna talk about adding the little flying geese that go around each section. It kind of looks like a flower, a little bit. Maybe a, a big flower block. <laughs> so it's really fun. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna start with these, this big center square. And you can see this is a nice big piece of fabric, which is awesome. And um, you can find the link for the Country Daisies quilt pattern in my um, video description today. And while you're at it, if you're on YouTube, if you could like and subscribe, that would be great. <laughs> Definitely please do that every week. That helps me out a lot. Um, so you can check out the video description for the link to the pattern. It's the Country Daisies quilt pattern. So you'll need the pattern to follow along and sew with us and that will have all the measurements. These videos are to basically just kind of give you a visual of the sewing through the block and then also to um, give you some extra tips and things. So, really fun. So what we're gonna do is this is our A piece and we need four B print pieces. And I've already drawn a diagonal line, I don't know if you guys can see, with my blue marking pen down the from point to point on my little daisy fabric so that is on all of these and i this print is not directional so i just went ahead and did you know a diagonal line if i was doing a directional print and i wanted to be careful of that i would place it in place fold back my piece and make sure that the direction is going the way that i want it to so if this is the top you know and this is face up then i would just verify, okay, this is the correct layout for whatever is your direction before putting it in place. So just a quick little like double check. Okay, I want this one and this one. We don't have to worry about that with this print because it is non-directional. So what we're gonna do is go over to the machine and we are going to sew two corners at once and we are gonna sew on the diagonal line. So we are gonna sew from here to here and we are gonna sew from here to here. And we can do two of these at once. We can't do all four at once because our pieces do overlap here. So what we have to do is do two at once and then trim and then we'll do the remaining two. So let's go sew. Okay, are you ready to sew? This is gonna be fun. <laughs> I have a little, oh, I bumped you. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, so the same thing here. I'm going to make sure my pieces are lined up on my fabric and I'm going to sew here from diagonal line to diagonal line. I do have a laser that is on my machine. You can see it right here. And I like to turn that on even if I have drawn my diagonal line because it just helps keep my seam a little bit straighter. 
If you don't have that feature, that's okay. You've drawn your diagonal line, so you're just going to keep your press, the center of your presser foot lined up with that, that line that you made. So we're just gonna sew a straight seam. When you're sewing, you want to let your presser foot and the feed dogs be your guide here. You don't want to hold this because you are sewing on a diagonal line. It can be easy to stretch out your fabric. So you want to just be a guide here. You're just kind of helping it along, but you're not pulling or pushing in any way. So we've done one side and now we're going to line up the other side, the other square, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. And we're gonna sew across here. So just making nice straight lines. And again, letting the machine do the work for us, especially important on these bias seams where your uh, machine is sewing on a diagonal. So you can see here, now we have a seam on this one and we have a seam on this one. And now it's time to trim and press. So let's do that. Okay, so here we are. We have sewn our seams right here, and now it's time to trim off this extras. Now you can save these pieces if you would like. That's a pretty good size half square triangle. The other thing that you can do is, if you would like to take just an extra step and sew, so if you want to, you can sew this into a half square triangle with just two extras, or one extra seam per corner. So what you would do is you would draw, you know, make your seam, then you would measure a half an inch over, uh, no, a quarter of an inch, I'm sorry, draw a line, and then do it again. So you're drawing two lines a quarter of an inch away from your seam allowance. So this is my seam, this is one quarter of an inch, this is another quarter of an inch. You would sew another seam here on this second quarter of an inch line, cut on the first one and you will have a half square triangle. And that half square triangle would be about, let's measure it. Well, you could trim it down to a three inch half square triangle and have a pretty good size half square triangle left if you wanted to. You don't have to do that by any means, but it's just an option if you like to save your scraps and if you like to make up you know, extra half square triangles with your projects, then that is a quick, easy way to have some extras. But we're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna go ahead and trim off the pieces. I'm putting my ruler on the seam so that it's this quarter inch line is on the seam. And then I am going to trim away. So now I have a quarter inch seam allowance on either side of my seam. And so we're gonna press. And our iron turned off. <laughs> That's fine, right? It's fine. So I'm going to, I have my little handy dandy wool mat here and I'm going to go ahead and just open up my seams and press on the front. And I'm doing the same thing on this side so that I am pressing my half square triangles open. And I'm going to give them just a little shot with my starch to make that lay nicely since we are sewing on top of that seam. And you can see that the starch really just kind of helps everything lay a little bit flatter, which is probably why they named their starch flatter. <laughs> They're so clever that way. Okay, so. Here is our two sides of our block. And now we're gonna repeat the exact same step and we are going to sew two more squares on the opposite two corners. So I'm going to put one here and I'm going to sew this way. So basically we're making our diagonal lines go in a diamond because we want a, like a square and a square effect with this. Morgan says she always makes bonus um, half square triangles like that. Good job, Morgan, that's so good. 
Kendra says she's happy that um, she found this channel. Thanks, Kendra. I'm so glad. <laughs> oh, Teresa does the half square triangle um, tip too. That's great. Awesome, you guys. I'm so glad you guys do that. Um, so now we're going to do the exact same thing that we did before. We're going to just do two opposite squares. So I'm sewing here and I'm sewing here. And so let's go sew. I love how big these blocks are. It really makes it easy to, to sew them up. There's just, it's so fast, <laughs> which is a beautiful thing. Um, I'm all about, I like little blocks too. I think they're a really fun challenge and I think you can do some really great things with little blocks, but there is something very satisfying about sewing up a ginormous block and having it <laughs> take up a good portion of your quilt, right? <laughs> it's very, um, satisfying and we, um, it makes it a little bit easier. We do have some piecing to do for this quilt, but we only have to make four of these guys. So because they're so big, they go up pretty quickly. So I'm doing the exact same thing that I did before is I am sewing together the squares on either corner of my print square. And so now I have the seam here and the seam here, and I'm going to trim and press again, just like we did with the last step. Okay, so again, we're trimming, super easy. And again, you can do the exact same thing. So really from one block, you could end up with four half square triangles, multiply that times four blocks, and you would have 16 very cute little half square triangles. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to go ahead and open this up and press. And I know that it's gotten very bright in here, you guys. I'm gonna see what I can do about that. <laughs> Fortunately, most of what we're doing is this overhead camera and that works out well. So now we are pressing our pieces and I'm gonna um, not put my <laughs> iron on my cutting mat. That would be unfortunate. I'm going to go ahead and do that a little spray so that it lays nicely. And then that makes for a really cute little square in a square block, basically. And if you need to, if your points are kind of funky on either side, you can give your block a trim. It, um, it should be the exact size of the piece that you started with, um, eight and a half inches by eight and a half. So if you need to do any trimming, you can. If it is, as long as it's very close, <laughs> don't stress too much about it, okay? So we're gonna set that to the side. And the next part that we are going to do is we are going to take our C pieces. Well, actually we're skipping straight to D because it's the same method for the C and D print pieces. You're going to be making flying geese. So we are going to do this same steps. We're doing some stitch and flips with this block and we are doing them. We're sewing here and then here. So I'm just going to do that real quick because then I have a tip for you that is different than what it shows in the pattern. So let me sew this for you. Okay, so my diagonal line for this one, because I want these flying geese to have the background pieces on each corner is my diagonal line goes from the bottom corner to the top center or almost center. So I'm going to sew on that marked line. And this is the exact same method that we used in the center block. We're just using the stitch and flips to make fine geese this time. So super easy. So I've done a seam down that line and now we're going to trim this end off and press. You can do the exact same thing that we talked about with the big half square triangles if you want wee tiny half square triangles. 
um, that is fine. <laughs> There's no limit to what size fabric a half square triangles. Well, I suppose there is a limit. If it gets really small, then that will make you kind of cranky. Tiny half square triangles are not my friends. <laughs> Sandra likes the fabric, yay, thank you. And Donna said that she agrees the larger blocks with less piecing are a nice break from smaller blocks with lots of piecing. Yes, right? They're so much, so much easier to do. Okay, so what we're going to do is I've trimmed off the corner and now we're gonna press. And for this one, we are pressing towards the background fabric, okay? So we're just gonna give that a little press. Sandra, it's a little quiet here. It's a little tiny bit louder, but it is a pretty quiet machine. Um, she said my sewing machine is so quiet. I do love it. It's a really, it's a nice running machine. <laughs> um, Teresa asked if the flatter spray shrinks your block. No, Teresa, I have not noticed that it ever does that. Um, and Janice says, you cannot control the sun. Relax, we can handle what the sun is doing. That's very nice of you, Janice. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna place the remaining background piece on this side. Now our diagonal line goes from the top center to the bottom right corner, and we're gonna sew on that line. Why don't you come with me? Okay. So here is our line. We are going to sew across that seam here. So just a quick little seam. I tend to start slow just so I don't, um, we've all sewn on machines and this one doesn't do it very often, but I've kind of gotten the habit of starting my seam a little bit slow to make sure that the ends don't get eaten. I don't like that when you're starting off and the seam gets kind of eaten into your machine. So um, now I have my seam and we're going to go and press that to the, um, to make our flying heat. Okay, so here's our seam. We are going to trim. Cut that off, and now we're going to press. So on this side of the block, I pressed the seam towards the background piece. And in your quilt instructions, it says to press them both that way. Now you can do that, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way, but I have been working more and more with sewing half, uh, flying geese and pressing the seams opposite each other and I'm finding that when I am sewing blocks like this, that they nest together a little bit better if their seams are pressed opposite each other. So we pressed this one to the background fabric. Now we're gonna press this seam towards the print fabric. So again, it's, it's, off, it's different than what it says in your pattern and you're welcome to sew it up any way you like, um, press it up any way you like. There's no you know, right or wrong, but I just wanted to kind of give you this tip that if you want to press them opposite each other, it gives you the same look. You're still dealing with a really cute little flying geese. And, but then the next one, if you press them all that way, so that on the left side, it's pressed toward the background fabric, and on the right side, it's pressed toward the print fabric, then when you line them up and do this kind of thing, those seams are gonna nest at each corner. So you're not gonna have to worry quite so much about lining them up and double checking them because you will be able to nest them. So that is my biggest tip for today, <laughs> um, is to press them opposite like that so that you have that advantage of nesting. You won't know any difference if you don't, You'll just have to check it a little bit more. So once you do your half, your flying geese, you're gonna make up a bunch of these. So with the B, the C print, you're going to make up for each block eight of these. And with the D prints, and remember, the C prints are the same on every block if you're using the kit. The D prints are this teal with the Bs and the teal with the hexagons. 
And for each block with the darker teal, you're going to make up 12. And then you're going to sew them together in rows. So your D blocks, your B blocks, okay, C blocks, <laughs> sorry y'all, will get sewn together in groups of two and you're going to sew them to each side you're going to sew them to two sides of your, so it kind of goes like this. This is your center that we sewed up, and then you have two of your little flying geese that are going to go on each side, and you're going to sew a background piece to the, so we're making up four groups of two, and to two of those you're going to sew on here, Two of those you are gonna sew to background pieces. These are F background pieces. So once you've done that, then you will sew those top and bottom to the center portion of your block. So that when you sew them all together, it looks like this. So we're doing some magic of, magic of television prep today. <laughs> because otherwise we would be here like till four <laughs> and I know you guys love videos but that's a lot um, so what you're gonna just do is as you're sewing these together just double check you know your seam allowances get I mean you're matching up your corners as close as you can keep in mind that it's probably not going to be perfect okay um, let me play with the other camera here because I'm just gonna we're gonna have a little session <laughs> I'm gonna make sure that you guys can see me, okay? Because this is crazy town. Okay, well, it is what it is. <laughs> it's just gonna be a little bit funky today. Um, so keep in mind that you are really the only person that is going to notice if your seams are not perfectly lined up and your corners are not perfectly lined up. And I know I've said this to you guys before, but especially on a block like this, it can get frustrating because you are dealing with so many seams and so many corners um, that it's very easy to be off. So, you know, there's something that matches up here, something that matches up here. And then here at so at each point you've got several areas that it can be not perfect in the most cases we are not taking photos of our blocks <laughs> and posting them I mean it's okay to do right like we love sharing our blocks but don't let that if it's not perfect stop you from sharing your blocks if I did that y'all you would never see anything I made I will show you look this is not perfect um, if this it's a little bit hard to see on here but there's a good uh, break here where it's not like lined up corner to corner on this. And um, same with this one, as I ate a little bit of this one, it's hard to see. Um, but this one kind of is a little bit lost on this scene. I'm not gonna stress about that because really until I get my camera out and I zoom in and show you guys, you're not, it's not that noticeable. And when you have your quilts, that you've quilted and everything, especially once it's quilted, I mean, there's so much that quilting hides, right? Once it's quilted, you're not gonna see that either. So don't stress too much about this block. <laughs> there's my little, like, go team cheer for you guys. Okay, so back to piecing. Once we have our pieces, this row, which are our C and E pieces all on here, then you're gonna do the exact same thing that you did before, but you're going to do it with the D pieces. So we've made these up and we've sewn the D pieces in groups of three, just like we did these in groups of two. And so you're gonna sew for each quilt block four of the groups of three. So you'll sew two on the side You'll sew two on each side, and then you will sew your background pieces to each end. No, don't change those. <laughs> Sorry, I brought over bees. So you will um, sew your background piece on each side, and you will sew those to the top and bottom. So that once you have them all sewn, 
then the block looks like this, which is a little bit hard to see, but I'll scooch it around. So you can see that it's the exact same method, just repeated, you just have one extra flying geese. Make sure that your print pieces on your flying geese are all in towards the center because we're going for that kind of flower angled look. And, um, and that makes up the entire block. So it looks complicated. It looks like several different things are happening here, but it's really not. It's a stitch and flip block that is made using different pieces and then different numbers of the block. So again, two on each row here, three on each row around, and then you just have a cute little background piece to finish off those top and bottom rows in the corners. So <laughs> that, is, um, that is all there is to this block. And I'm gonna switch back to our camera and sit down. It's, um, again, I'm sorry about the, the lighting in here, you guys, today. It's a little funky. Um, but, oh, let's see. So Donna says she tends to stress over those corners, but will remember encouragement not to. Okay, good job, Donna. Really, it's, it's easy to do. I mean, I, of course, I want my block to be like my corners and seams to be lined up as closely as I can. But if I have just let it go for a little bit, I tend to forget that I didn't have it perfect before. And once we quilt them, then they're going to even hide more of that. And I believe somebody asked about quilting the flying geese. Um, so she had, Janice asked about quilting the flying geese, any recommendations since she custom quilts the quilt. So sometimes if you find that your flying geese are, um, those blocks are a little bit clunky as far as getting your machine over them and quilting them, you can also press your seams open and that makes for a little bit flatter of a block and also it just sometimes is a little bit easier to work with. So if you're finding you have a lot of bulk, try pressing those seams open and see if that reduces some of that for you and hopefully that helps. I'm glad you guys like the block. Sandra likes the color placement, I'm so glad. Um, Melissa says we can just take a far away across the room long distance pick of the blocks and no one will ever see. Exactly, Melissa. <laughs> the farther away it is, look, it's perfect. <laughs> All right, you guys, I really appreciate you tuning in. Um, if you guys have any questions about any blocks ever, just let me know. I'm always happy to help. Um, you can tag me at Bev McCullough in the video and or you can always send me an email. Happy to do that. Answer questions there. You can um, make sure you still enter the giveaway if you haven't already left a comment for the cute so sampler box. Tomorrow on the blog, I will have my block seven for the RBD block challenge. Wednesday, we are continuing sewing our uh, mini quilts together. We Last week, we did curves. If you have been wanting to sew curves, definitely check out Wednesday's video because we had a great time. They're a lot easier and more fun than you think. So we are gonna sew our quilt tops together this week on Wednesday night. You can still join in with that at any time. And then Thursday or Friday, I will share the heart pillow with you guys since you still want a heart pillow project. <laughs> All right, I go, hope you guys have a great rest of your week and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody.